This is the Oppo Find N2 Flip, Oppo's first gen vertical foldable, and it's got a lot of things going for it. Oppo's made some market improvements over what's currently available in the market, and well, these are some very interesting changes. Hey, I'm Ash, this is C40 Tech, and today let's unbox and take a close look at Oppo's Find N2 Flip. Now before we proceed, a quick request, if you're on Telegram, use the link in the description to join the C40 Tech channel so that you can keep track of all my new uploads. Guys, quick disclaimer, I am working with Oppo on this one. This is not a review video, just my unboxing and hands-on experience. That said, neither the video nor the script were sh shared with the brand in advance. With that out of the way, let's get to the unboxing. The packaging is pretty similar to what we've seen with the Fold. We've got the Hasselblad partnership mentioned on the outside. I like how the box opens up, kind of presenting you the phone. The first thing you see is the N2 Flip itself. Now this is the Astral Black. The back is glass, it's got a matte finish to it, and it seems pretty resistant to fingerprints and smudges. I love how Oppo's not wasted space here and I've chosen to go with a dual camera setup with two proper usable cameras, which we will talk about in a bit. Now if this black seems way too stealthy for you, Oppo does offer the N2 Flip in purple as well. They call it Moonlit Purple, and to me, that's the skew to get. It looks more attractive, but do note that the Moonlit Purple has a more glossy finish, so it might be more prone to picking up fingerprints. Anyways, back to the box. We have a USB Type-A to Type-C cable, followed by an 80 watt SuperVOOC charger. This cardboard envelope here houses a case, a SIM ejector tool, and the regular leaflets. Now the case, it fits well enough. I like included cases. This one, I liked a little bit more. Now, if you're like me and hate flaps on charging ports with cases, the way this one is built, you can just remove it. It's nothing major, it's just a small little nice touch that I noticed and liked and I thought I'd share. Moving on, remember the 80 watt SuperVOOC charger? Though that's the unit included in the box, this phone tops out at 44 watts, which is still plenty fast. I just guess it was more convenient for them to include an existing charger they already were mass producing instead of investing more time and money to design and produce a 44 watt charger. I'm not complaining, cause 44 watts is not slow, it's still zero to 60 in under 30 minutes, full charge in an hour. And if you have another phone that supports higher wattage Super Woo, the 80 watt charger that's in the box might just come in handy. So no complaints. Well, on the topic of battery, do note that the N2 Flip has the highest capacity battery on any flip form factor foldable. There's a 4300 mAh unit on the inside, and paired with that four nanometer Dimensity 9000 Plus, which Oppo claims they have further optimized for efficiency, I expect the battery life to be quite good. Now with that Dimensity 9000 Plus, we get eight gigs of LPDDR5 RAM and 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage. So pretty solid specs here. And despite all that, the N2 Flip is still pretty sleek at just 7.45 millimeters of thickness. Now when you fold it, it folds flat and the thickness is about 16 millimeters. Add to it the 191 gram weight, we've got ourselves a pretty wieldy little phone here. Now one of the highlights of the N2 Flip is this display right on the outside. This here is a 3.26 inch 720 by 382 pixel AMOLED panel with a peak brightness of 900 nits, which is quite acceptable and easily visible outdoors. Given this is the largest cover display on any flip phone today, I was super excited to test it out. But after using it, I have a little bit of mixed feelings. Now don't get me wrong, this is a beautiful, beautiful panel, but what it allows us to do, at least as of today, it's a little limited. So let's start with just that. What can you do with this cover display? You remember all the customization options you get with Oppo's always on functionality? Well, that's exactly where you set the screen up from. So you can get Bitmojis, select clock styles, etc. Additionally, you can also select from five interactive pets. Just a fun little touch. It's nice to have a cat on screen doing cat things, but with phones instead. If you think about it, it's actually quite cute. And here it pulls information from your notification shades media controls. With recent Android versions, you get media playback controls right on your notification chain. And whatever info you can get from it will pop up right here on the screen. Now this is your default screen. You can unlock this panel with either the fingerprint scanner that is built into the power key, or once you set up face unlock, the phone's pretty quick to use the primary rear camera to scan your face. Swipe to the left and you can access up to six widgets. We have camera, weather, one for events, a very handy little timer, so you can quickly say set a timer for 30 minutes. You also get a widget for the recorder and want to check your wireless Oppo or OnePlus earbuds. 
Okay, now apart from this, a swipe down from the top gives you access to your quick toggles. Pretty handy if you wanna quickly turn Wi-Fi or data on or off, or if you wanna say turn on the flashlight, which BD Dub gives you a three second countdown so as to not blind you. I really appreciated that. Pull up from the bottom and get access to your notifications. There's not really much you can do here. You can reply to some of these notifications with an emoji or some preset messages. Oppo does say more features should be out next month like voice dictation and a Spotify widget. Apart from this, you can of course use the cover display when you're shooting. Uh, from the camera widget, you can either choose photo, portrait or video. And here you can turn the beauty mode on or off or shoot with a timer. Once you've taken the picture, you can even preview it right from the cover display. Nice. Do know that you can't switch to the wide angle camera from here and video is restricted to 1080p. Now when you are shooting with the phone unfolded, you can turn the cover display on so that the subject gets to see what's on the viewfinder. Also, I forgot to mention earlier, this display, it comes with a screen protector pre-applied. Now while all of this is super cool, given the aspect ratio and the fact that it's a pretty large screen, I mean, it's 3.26 inches and we have actual full-fledged phones these days that sport smaller screens, they are a niche and they aren't very usable, but I bring them up just to make a point. Full Android, and I use this term very, very loosely, Full Android is usable on a screen like this. So maybe if Oppo allowed for a list where we can choose what, uh, what apps we can use here, a little bit more freedom to tinker around with is what I'm saying. If that was done, I think it would be super cool. The way things stand, it seems like a missed opportunity to me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Now the other display, the one you see when the phone is unfolded, this is 6.8 inches, 21 by 9, Full HD Plus AMOLED with a 120 hertz refresh. The highlight here is how minimal the crease is. It's a lot less prominent than what you'd find on most foldable flip phones these days. When the screen's on and you're using the phone, you almost never notice it, even when you actually touch it. Of course, there is a crease, but to see it, you need to look at it at exactly the right angle. So from a technology perspective, Oppo's done very well here. This variable high refresh panel, it's a pleasure to use. It's got a peak max brightness of 1600 nits. So usage outdoors isn't an issue. They've also included stereo speakers and Dolby Atmos support. So playing games, watching videos, especially 21 by nine movies, the experience, it's excellent. Even with regular usage, this panel coupled with the solid specs underneath, Color OS 13 built on top of Android 13, it's very smooth and responsive. Talking about Color OS, Oppo has promised four years of OS updates and five years of security patches, which is commendable. Well, you might be very familiar with Color OS at this point, given the number of phones that we've seen it running on, there are a few features that are unique to the Find N2. Uh, for example, say you're in the YouTube app and you fold the phone, the video kind of readjusts to take up the top half of the screen. You get something similar with the camera app too. This is particularly useful if you need to put your phone down and take a picture. Now the N2 Flip's Flexion hinge, it can stay rigid between say 45 and 110 degrees. So if you wanna put it down to frame a shot, take a group selfie or just take a video call, it's very useful. It even allows you to shoot videos in handicap mode if you wanna go old school. It's also super convenient when you need to say, adjust filters for a shot. Here's your Radiant, Serenity and Emerald, a direct result of that Hasselblad collaboration. Now the optics, they seem promising. As we saw at the start, there's a dual camera setup to the back. The primary is Sony's IMX890, a 50 megapixel sensor that's paired with an f1.8 lens. It does quite well under good light. Here are some more samples, take a look for yourself. As you can see, the details, the dynamic range, they're all good. And these are selfies that are shot with the primary camera using that cover display. Even under low light, the Marisilicon X NPU included helps preserve detail and keep the noise to a minimum. The secondary is an 8 megapixel Sony IMX355 ultra wide, and it seems to do a respectable job. The selfie camera, that's yet another Sony sensor, a 32 megapixel IMX709 this time. A weird thing to note here is that the video out of the primary camera drops to 1080p if you're shooting using the cover display, otherwise it maxes out to 4K30, and the performance seems just fine. Now overall, I love what Oppo's done with the Find N2 Flip. Well, I don't know what the Indian pricing is gonna be at this point as of when I'm shooting this video. 
I expect it to be cheaper than the competition, given they've priced the Find N2 Flip 12 to 15% lower in other markets. Anyways, once I do know the price, I will add it to the description or pin it in the comment down below, so do check that space. And while you're on that, give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Hit that bell icon if you're already subscribed so that you don't miss out on my future content. And I guess that's pretty much it for this video. So till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4D Tech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.